I saw this tweet the other day that said, there are no bad butts, just bad pants. And I thought that was really beautiful. Hello, Bibliophiles. Yes, I finally got myself a Bibliophile t-shirt. I found it on the Ideal Bookshelf uh, Instagram shop. Um, if you don't know who, what the Ideal ideal Bookshelf is, they make these kind of illustrations of book covers. I'm sure you know them. This is a puzzle, by the way, obviously. But I was just browsing and I saw the shirt and I was like, I have to have it. It comes in white too, but I will link it down below. So if you also want a Bibliophile t-shirt, you can avail yourself of it. Um, I'm going to do a book on haul for you today. Um, I recently bought a bunch of new books and I had to get rid of books to make room on my shelves for them. Oh gosh, and they're already still overflowing. Oh, just looking at them right now gives me a lot of anxiety. But anyway, that's a different conversation for a different day. Let's go through the books that I am unhauling, giving to a different home. Um, I won't, there's a lot, so I'm not gonna dwell too much on each of them. There is no rhyme or reason to the order of these. So let's just start from the first book on the top. This is One Day by David Nichols. This is the movie cover. Um, is that Anne Hathaway? I've never seen the movie. I read this book a while ago now. I had read it on my e-reader, but I got this used copy at the library sale. And, um, I bought it because the spine was in great condition. <laughs> that's like, that's the truth. Um, this is a book about uh, like two friends who meet on the same day every year for like, I don't know, 20 years or something. And this like covers every seven years when they meet. And it's a really good book, actually. I enjoyed it a lot once I got into it, um, but I just don't see myself rereading it again. And I don't need to keep it on my shelf. If I need to reread, I can just get it from the library or I can, I don't know. I, I mean, if I must read it again someday, I'll be able to get my hands on it. But it is a really good book. And I think if you like, like romances, but not like, I'm so sorry to call it this, but if you like literary romances, that might be the book for you. Um, it's really good. I recommend it. I just don't need to keep it anymore. Um, I'm getting rid of this book, which is The Flame Alphabet, a novel by Ben Marcus. Can we also talk about how every book has a novel like written on the cover? Because if we don't know it's a novel, I, ha I hate it. I've just like recently discovered it and I'm like, are we idiots? Like, why do you keep telling us it's a novel? I mean, I guess it's distinguished from nonfiction, but still, it's annoying to me. Anyway, this is The Flame Alphabet and I bought this again from the library sale. I bought it primarily because I saw a video where uh, Kayla from Books and Lala said she hated it. And, um, and Kayla and I have opposite reading tastes. So I figured if she didn't like it, I might like it. But I've had it on my shelf for a couple of years and oh, like, I don't even know what it's about. This is the first sentence which <laughs> in the back which instantly turns me off. In the flame alphabet, the most maniacally gifted writer of our generation delivers a novel about how far we will go in order to protect loved ones. The most maniacally gifted writer? Subjective. As you already saw, this is Nicole's Nikolsky by Nicholas Nicholas Dickner, which I picked up because it won the Canada Reads and I um you know, I'm always interested in what um, is part of the zeitgeist of the Canada Reads list. This was 2011, I think it was, 2010. Um, and I've seen it like around for years and I picked up a used copy, but again, truthfully, my shelves, no space. And this is what I'm not super interested in uh, generally. So that one can go to a new home. I'm sure someone will find interest uh, in that book. Um, I'm getting rid of my copy of When God Was a Rabbit by Sarah Winman. You don't see a lot of like blue foiling, do you? It's beautiful, but this book I didn't super love. I love Tin Man by Sarah Winman and I'm very excited about her new book coming out in Canada sometime in like October, I think, September, October, um, called Still Life, which I'm again, very excited about. But this one was okay, inexplicably. Like, it's, set in the, it's set in the UK in 20, uh, 2001 and inexplicably, it like, <laughs> at the end is about 9-11 and I didn't see that coming and I felt it was unnecessary and I did not find it moving. I found it irritating. Um, so this one can find a new home. Uh, her writing is lovely, just like this book itself was just, it didn't strike the chords for me. I have a copy of As I Lay Dying by William Faulkner. Why do I have a copy of this? I, the chances of me reading this, it's so slim, <laughs> it's so slim. I have never for a moment thought I wanted to read Faulkner. I have thought, oh, maybe I should read him, but never have I thought I want to. So, and I think I saw somebody else recently say that they had tried to read him and it was like a fever dream. So like, no, thank you. I don't have to read things I don't want to read anymore because I am an adult. I am finally saying goodbye to my copy of The Ministry of Utmost Happiness by Aaron Dotty Roy. I read this for a book club and I really did not enjoy this book and I held on to it because it made me feel like I was smart for having, <laughs> having read it. But this book was a challenge. It's a really difficult book to read. There isn't really any plot or 
um, the characters don't really intersect in any meaningful way toward the end. It really is disjointed, it's complicated. There's a lot in here about Indian and uh, Pakistani, I think it's Pakistani, history. Um, and it's just like, it's if you don't understand the history, it's very confusing. So I don't know a lot about that, that world and I am interested in that history, but it doesn't tell me it. It just reacts to the history as if you should already know about it. And so I am not the audience for this book. We read it in my book club and we had a really good discussion about it because we were all pretty divided about this book. Um, but in the end, I just, I don't need to keep it anymore. I'm never gonna reread it. Um, there is a story in here, there was like one of the storylines that's probably the only coherent storyline about um, a trans character. And that character and that story is really interesting. But everything else in here is really confusing and <laughs> dare I say bad um so yeah I apparently this is just how she writes like this is her style but if that's the case then she's not for me and I haven't read the god of small things so this will find a new home perhaps someone will really love this and so they're gonna get a really beautiful hardcover copy of that book um I have this copy this um the new kings of nonfiction with Malcolm Gladwell Jack Hitt Chuck Klosterman Susan Orlean uh James McManus Bill Buford Bufford or Buford I don't know his name. This is edited by Ira Glass. This is again like something I got at the library sale and I was really interested at the time but it was published what year? Let's just look. 2007 and I am significantly less interested in men writing essays <laughs> than I was when I first picked this up and I do really like um you know the writing of Mac Malcolm Gladwell and I like um Michael Pollan is in here, Chuck Klosterman but all these people are incredibly problematic right now and I wish someone could just tell me how to feel about Malcolm Gladwell at the moment. Um, I love his books and I like his podcast and I feel like I'm supposed to hate him and I wish someone could explain to me why. So please tell me how to feel about Malcolm Gladwell. In the meantime, this book will find a new home. My sister gave me a copy of this Rick Mercer's book, uh, Final Report, which I think is a short, short collection of like, he, you know how he used to do those like three minute rants on his show? Um, I think this is like some of those rants kind of put together in a book. I have read it a little bit, I've skimmed it a little bit. Um, it's okay. It's yeah, the greatest rant from all 15 seasons of his show. Uh, I'm just never gonna, I've read parts of it. I just haven't read the whole thing. And I, yeah, this is just not the kind of thing I want to read uh, anymore. But I do really like Rick Mercer. I haven't met him yet. And I would love to meet him someday. He's from Newfoundland. And I'm a big, I'm a big fan. Um, but uh, yeah, I just think this book can find a better home. The Light Between Oceans by M.L. Stedman. This book how did I get this book? Why do I have this book? What's this book about? I don't know how to answer any of those questions. It must have been a library sale pick. Um, that cover is truly very beautiful. You know what it reminds me of? Uh, the Majestic. That movie is excellent. I should watch that tonight. Anyway, um, The Light Between Oceans. Uh, again, a novel. Come on, guys. If you work in publishing, can you tell me why they have to put a novel on everything? Just, I'm curious. So let me know. Uh, this might be a love story. I mean, I assume it's, oh my god, there's a baby a face on the back. I never realized before. Um, this must be, oh, this is set in Australia, after the war, they become a lighthouse keeper, they adopt a baby, blah, blah, blah. This is, I mean, these end papers, spectacular. Um, but I just, I've never wanted to pick this up. I've had it for a couple of years. Oh, I do like the cover of that hardback. Anyway, I've just never wanted to pick it up, so I'm sure that other people will want to read this, so that can go in the pilot as well. I'm getting rid of my last two unread John Boynes, which is Stay Where You Are and Then Leave, and then The Mutiny on the Bounty. I picked both of these books up at the library sale again. And you, if you've been around for a long time, you know my relationship with John Boyne is that I love his writing so much. I love his books, but I just cannot condone his existence online. Like he's really nasty and he like, does not support uh, the LGBT community in any, uh, and especially not uh, trans rights. And I just, he could choose not to say anything, but yet he chooses to say things all the time, which is a shame. But anyway, it's just time to get rid of these books. I just have no desire to read them anymore. Um, yeah, it's again a shame because I loved his writing. But you know, there are other books that have great writing that the authors support trans people and are not bad people. I'm finally happily saying goodbye to this copy of England, England by Julian Burns. Again, if look, a novel yet again. Um, if you have been around for a long time, again, you know that I love Julian Burns. England, England is my favorite of his books that I have read and I've read a lot of them. Um, but I hate this copy. This is a copy I picked up again at the library sale because I wanted to have, um, 
a copy here because my copy is home in my parents' basement <laughs> in Newfoundland. So I want to have a copy here. But then when I was out book shopping with Jen a couple weekends ago, I found a used copy that's uh, a paperback and a much nicer cover. And so I decided to say goodbye to this one. Let somebody else read this magnificent book and uh, I can have a, an, an, a smaller and nicer edition on my shelf. Um, I also, if you, if you don't know, I prefer paperbacks to hardbacks, which my friend Aaron will chastise me for forever, but I just prefer them. I have a couple of Canadian books that have like made it onto my shelves. This is called A Secret Between Us by Danielle Poliquin. This is translated from the French by uh, Donald Winkler. Again, this was a library sale purchase. I thought, oh, I should pick up some French Canadian literature um, translated, but I have never heard a single thing about this book ever from anyone in the world. And um, I have never wanted to pick it up since I bought it. So I have a lot of other books in translation from French on my shelf at the moment. So this one can go. I have this book, which is Boy Oh Boy by Brian Doyle. Now I did half a master's at one point in my life in children's literature. It was in a Canadian university. And so there's a lot of focus on Canadian children's literature. And this was a book that was talked about a lot, um, but it doesn't even say that it's a children's book, but I'm pretty sure it is. Anyway, this was a book that I found, again, at the library sale, and I thought, oh, I haven't read it, and I, like, it's a quintessential Canadian children's book, I should read it, but honestly, I'm never going to read it. As World War II comes to an end, returning soldiers, parties, fights, and drunks fill the streets. It should all be very exciting for Martin oh boy, except for one thing. I don't want to know what the one thing is. Then I picked up in um, where like people leave books in my building, a copy of Warlight by Michael Antacci, and I bought this. I, is this might be on the CBC's list of 100 books, the book the list that I'm working through. You know, over the past couple of years I've been working through. This might be in the list, or it might be published after it. So I don't know if it is. But anyway, I saw this book on the table downstairs in the um, laundry room, and I thought. Oh, this is a Michael and Dachi book. Uh, I should read it. <laughs> and truthfully, I've only ever read one Michael and Dachi book, and I can't remember what it was called, but it was about a family because it was in a class I did about Canadian autobiography. And I, mm, I don't know what it's called. Like, I'm like racking my brain. I can't remember what it's called, but I didn't like it. And I just don't have a lot of um, desire to read more of him. So I think. I held on to this for a couple of months, but I think maybe I'll return it to where I got it so others can uh, can pick it up and perhaps actually read it and enjoy it. I have held on to this book for far too long because this book is bad. <laughs> this is Murmur by Will Eaves. I bought this when I was in London the last time I was there three years ago, four years ago. Gosh, what year is it? Anyway, it was a mission of mine to buy this book when I went to London because I think I had seen Simon talk about it, Simon from Savage Reads. And um, it's supposed to be like a kind of retelling or like a, a reimagining of Alan Turing's life. Because this book is really awful. I remember reading parts of this and I, I think if you look at my review on Goodreads of this book, I quoted a section from this book that I read multiple times and I was like, this has no meaning. It's just words. And uh, I really struggled with this book and it was a shame because I had high hopes for it. I was really interested in the concept. Um, but it didn't deliver. But I held on to it for a long time because I just like really liked the texture of this cover. I like it's like a really beautifully published book. <laughs> um, it's time to say it. It's time to see it go. I'm never gonna reread this. It's not good. So I might even just like recycle it. Ooh. I have a copy of The Great Divorce by C.S. Lewis. I'm not a massive C.S. Lewis fan. I have read Mere Christianity, which I uh, enjoyed, and I and I'm keeping forever because I think it's some really beautiful stuff in there. But this book. C.S. Lewis I have learned a lot about over the years and I don't necessarily agree with a lot of the things that he wrote or believed particularly pertaining to women um, but I had held on to this because my dad's a big fan of C.S. Lewis and I have some friends who are as well and I kind of thought I would give it a whirl but this um, seems like another I didn't know this I, th I thought this was like like nonfiction, but this is a fiction um, it says like the writer in a dream boards a bus on a drizzly afternoon and embarks on an incredible voyage through heaven and hell. He meets a host of supernatural beings far removed from his expectations and comes to significant realizations about the ultimate consequences of everyday behavior. This sounds like a moral tale, like a morality play, and I just 0% interested in that these days. I had this copy of The Hound of the Baskervilles by Sherlock by Sherlock Holmes, about Sherlock Holmes, which is by Arthur Conan Doyle. Uh, can you imagine Sherlock Holmes actually wrote this? Hilarious. Anyway, um, I am not, I love the show Sherlock, it's one of my favorite shows of all time, but I'm not a huge fan of Sherlock 
books. The stories don't super appeal to me. I don't think I like Doyle's writing very much. So I had bought this and for the past couple of years I'm like oh I will I will read this on Halloween and I've never done that because I don't like Halloween. <laughs> I am like the only person on booktube who doesn't like spoopy season. I don't like scary books and I don't really like being frightened um, in any capacity ever. So um, this book is something I've had and then I think it's just I'm just not going to read it. I'm just not going to. So that can find a new home. This is a book I'm kind of just, I'm, I'm still on the fence about. I would love for you to weigh in if I should get rid of it or keep it. This is A Gentleman in Moscow by Amar Tolls. Here's the thing about this book. I have seen this book on like, like every bookstore has this like prominently displayed for years. It's been like, like begging you to buy it in bookstores. So I assume that many, many, many people have bought and read this book, but I have heard nobody on the bookish internet talk about it ever. Like at least I've not registered it anyway. So I bought this thinking, look, a novel. Um, I bought this thinking that this is like the story for me, a man who's like locked up in a hotel in Moscow, like sounds like a very much a me story. And I got a hundred pages in and I just found the writing to be really irritating. It had this like kind of bouncy juviance or something to it that just felt, uh, there was something about it that it all felt sarcastic and I couldn't really tell what the tone was trying to convey. So I got a hundred pages in, I decided to DNF it, but then I decided maybe I was just in the wrong mood to be reading it. So if you've read this and you think I would like it, like maybe I can just like have a different perspective to start reading it, please let me know if I should keep this book and continue it. Um, I would love to know. I'm going to say goodbye to my copy of The Trouble with Goats and Sheep. Can you even read that cover? Because of the way it's it's like fake embossed. Anyway, this is by Joanna Cannon. I read her other book, Three Things About Elsie, which I liked. I didn't love it, but I did enjoy it. This is her first book and I picked it up because I read her first one. Again, this was like used bookstore copy. And um, I just not interested in reading it anymore. You know I love Jeanette Winterson. She's one of my favorite writers, but her books are incredibly hit or miss. I generally feel that I either love her books or I really hate them. There are a couple I feel in the middle about. This one is very much in the middle, uh, leaning more toward not liking this book. I read it in a book club with some of my friends and we all kind of agreed that parts of this were really good and parts of it were not so great. My number one thing I think that affects my reading of this book is that I don't like Frankenstein, or the original Frankenstein. I find it very irritating and um, happy to have a conversation about that later. <laughs> And I know that Will is going to come for me in this video because it is their favorite book, but I don't like Frankenstein. Um, so Frankenstein, which is a retelling, a modern day retelling of Frankenstein, where I don't know, it's not the doctor, but like somebody else who like knows the doctor is um, a transgender person or a non-binary person. And that's kind of like a big part of the story. And that's an interesting part of the story, kind of the conversation around identity and gender. That's interesting. But the story of Frankenstein or the Frankenstein is like, I don't even remember what, the, there's a flooding at one point. I know that. That's all I can tell you about it. So perhaps someone else will enjoy it. Perhaps not. This is my copy of The Stopping Places by Damien Labasse. I think it's pronounced Labasse, not Labas. Um, Damien Labasse is a uh, gypsy traveler of, of gypsy traveler heritage and he grew up in the community, but he left to go to university. I think he went to Cambridge or Ox, he went to Oxbridge anyway. And this book was about him supposedly we're going back and like revisiting his um, parts of his like culture that he felt disconnected with or like trying to like parts that he missed uh, out on while going to school in, in a different way in different places. And I was really excited about this book and it ended up being really disappointing in some ways like the parts where he actually explains gypsy culture is so interesting like the language and different clothing and like different behaviors and the foods and like and like the ceremonies all that was so interesting <laughs> most of this book is him just driving around by himself in a camper van and then eating stew <laughs> and it's just like it's not very interesting and it's a shame because like the parts that are interesting are excellent well most of it is just like talking about grass honestly a lot of it's about grass and it's really boring um i have listened to some podcasts with damien labas and i've also watched a video where he is like doing a, like a speech and those are far more interesting i think he's a much better uh, orator than he is a writer so um i would not recommend this book because <laughs> i just thought it was boring but i mean i would probably recommend like finding other places where 
um, Damien Labasse is like speaking about his culture and listening to those, um, but perhaps not this book. So this is gonna go to a different home. I finally got around to reading We Knew New Names by Novaila Polawayo this year. This is set in, it's a kind of a dual novel where the first part is set in Zimbabwe, um, just as they are voting for independence, I believe. And then it's set in America. And so it's set on this one girl, focus on one girl named Darling. She's the protagonist, her and a group of friends, um, just kind of explain, it describes their life, like running around the streets, going to like the rich neighborhood and like stealing all the mangoes and like, um, their church, the weird church ceremony they have to go to where she's really uncomfortable. Um, but like it's where, where they all go on Sundays and then it talks about like, um, there's a heavy implication that, um, I don't know if it's her father or some other male in her life, uh, has AIDS and is just slowly dying from it. So there's all that kind of, about her life in Zimbabwe and then she moves to America with her aunt and, and that part, um, covers, so it's the same number of pages, I suppose, or the same number of pages of the first part. The first part covers maybe a couple of months of her life, and the, the last part covers many, many, many years of her growing up in America. And I found the first part fascinating. I loved the first part. I thought it was so interesting. I loved the characters. I loved the setting. I loved kind of the way that there was a lot of nuance and like um, a lot of things left unsaid. And I thought that was really powerful. And I found the part in America incredibly boring and nothing I just personally found it didn't say anything special or new and I just thought it was not great and I also didn't like that there was so much time passage because it felt like a really uh like unbalanced story so this one I liked the first half would have loved to just have ended it there um but yeah I'm sure someone else will enjoy it so I'm gonna bring that to a new home this book The Universe versus Alex Woods by Gavin Extance um, this one I found, again, the library sale um, on the shelves. I thought the cover appealed to me. I felt like this would be a fun, funny, kind of like quick read. And I just have never picked it up. And I just figured maybe it's time to part with it. Um, but this is also one that I could be convinced to keep and read because I I don't know what it is about this book. Something about this book <laughs> like tells me to keep it and read it. Um, I also I just like, like that cover a lot. It's really great. But yeah, if you've read this book, um, or you've heard anything about this book, let me know, because maybe I would keep this one and, and read it. This is Shelter by Young Young, I think it's how you pronounce it. This I bought based on Rinsey from Rinsey Reads, her recommendation. She loved this book. This is the story of a Korean, a Korean American family. Um, the son, the protagonist, he has a really fraught relationship with his parents and he kind of is, is separate from them. And then at the very beginning of this book, as we're learning about his kind of rickety relationship with his parents, we see his mother running towards him naked in a field, screaming and like bleeding. And we find out that she has been attacked in her home. And then we follow from this, uh, him, him and his wife and his new child having to take care of his mother and his father um, and piece out what happened to them to be broken into their home and like what the actual story is because the story doesn't seem to like line up properly. And that part of the story is interesting, but this is also a lot about the main character. What's his name? Um, Kyung Cho. I just found the main character insufferable in this book, which I think is probably the point, but I just, I couldn't handle it. He had, he was, there was nothing redeeming about him whatsoever. And I found it very difficult to read. So I, I'm just gonna pass this on to somebody else who might enjoy it. We're gonna finish with two books I have not read. The first one is called Surprised by Hope, Rethinking Heaven, the Resurrection, and the Mission of the Church by N.T. Wright. I bought this eight years ago, a very long time ago. I bought this because I it was on Tumblr and, the, you know, <laughs> eight years ago I was on Tumblr all the time and there was a quote I saw that I really, really liked. It was from this book and I like did a bunch, this is like what was a bit harder to find quotes. So I did a bunch of research and found out this is the book it was from and I ordered it right away and then I never read it. And I just don't think I could read this kind of book now. I actually don't think I could, have, I could have even read it eight years ago. I don't really like reading books about spirituality by men who are like, who are trying to like dissect the Bible. I just, there's something about the tone that feels really like, I don't know, it's something about it that feels like I'm being, yelled at by an old man and I just I can't do it I don't think an old white man yeah I just don't think I can do it so I think I'm gonna pass it on um yeah this just I uh yeah no not for me at this moment and then the last book I have which is a book that I think you know I had full intentions of reading at some point in my life but this is The Shock Doctrine by Naomi Klein the rise of disaster capitalism. And I 
have had it on my shelves for many, many years with the thought that I would pick it up. Uh, one of my former coworkers, she said she read this book and it really changed a lot about how she perceived the world. But she probably read this close to more than 10 years ago now. And I feel like the whole world is a disaster all of the time now. <laughs> so I don't know if I can read this. Um, I feel like scrolling through Twitter is basically what this book would give me. Now that is not fair to Naomi Klein because I'm sure this book is actually exceptional. I just don't think that this is the time to read this book and maybe I'll never be in a place to read this book and maybe I don't need to read this book anymore because it's 2021 and everything is different. So those are the books I'm saying goodbye to. I am saying hello to many books and I am shortly going to visit my good book friends in Edmonton, Rick and Erin, and we will be going book shopping, of course, while we're there. So I will have many new books entering my life to take um, the places of these that I'm saying goodbye to, um, who I've been happy to give a home to for a little while um, and happy to give them a new home. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys soon. Bye!